Microtubules are made up of alpha and beta tubulin. These monomers can undergo several post-translational modifications, such as the removal of the carboxy-terminal tyrosine residue of alpha tubulin by a carboxypeptidase, a process known as detyrosination. The tyrosine residue can be reattached by an enzyme called tubulin tyrosine ligase, or TTL, creating a cycle of tyrosine removal and readdition. The presence or absence of this carboxy terminal tyrosine is often used as a marker to distinguish different populations of microtubules within cells. Microtubules containing detyrosinated alpha tubulin are more stable, but this missing tyrosine was thought to be a consequence rather than a cause of microtubule stability. This has now been challenged by a team of scientists mainly based at the Grenoble Institute of Neurosciences in France under the direction of Didier Job and Annie Andrew. They've long been interested in tubulin detyrosination because mice lacking the TTL enzyme can't organise their neuronal networks properly and die shortly after birth. Since these mice can't reattach tyrosine to alpha tubulin, their microtubules are largely detyrosinated. Postdoc Leticia Paris also has a long-standing connection to the field. The tubulin tyrosination cycle was discovered in the 1970s by Hector Barra, one of Paris's former professors at the University of Cordoba in her native Argentina. When Paris looked at TTL knockout fibroblasts, she realised that the detyrosinated microtubules in these cells behaved differently to wild-type microtubules. I first discovered that uh, microtubules in TTL knockout cells were resistant to knockout more stable. Knockout is a drug that depolymerizes microtubules, and when microtubules are detyrosinated, they are very resistant to This led Paris to look at the dynamics of microtubules at the leading edge of living cells. In white type cells, I saw that microtubules polymerize, they contact the cell membrane, and after that, they depolymerize. Follow the arrows, and you'll see the wild type microtubules do exactly that. They reach the plasma membrane and then shrink back. But it's a different story in the knockout cells. In TTL knockout cells, with a lot of beta resonated tubulin, I saw a different um, behavior. Microtubules contact the membrane, and instead of depolymerizing, those microtubules follow the membrane for a while. This suggests that detyrosination is actually a cause rather than a consequence of microtubule stability. But how? The answer seems to involve microtubule depolymerizing motor proteins such as MCAC. When Paris transfected MCAC into TTL knockout fibroblasts, the detyrosinated microtubules disassembled much quicker after contacting the membrane. And when she knocked down MCAC with siRNAs, the microtubule dynamics of both wild type and TTL knockout cells were much slower and became indistinguishable from one another. Annie Andrew. So if you overexpress MCAC, you can get some uh, microtubule to depolymerize after membrane contact. Or in addition with uh, siRNA, we uh, actually equalize the, the genotype. So tubulin detyrosination clearly affects MCAC. But is the effect direct? To find out, Paris added recombinant MCAC to the exposed microtubules of lysed fibroblasts. Well, type cells uh, which have uh, tie microtubules depolymerize completely in, in the presence of MCAC, and TTL knockout cells which have uh, detyrosinated microtubules, they don't depolymerize. Paris saw a similar result when she added MCAC to microtubules made in vitro from purified tubulin. Tyrosinated microtubules were disassembled, while detyrosinated filaments were fairly stable. This was a really uh, direct experiment with pure microtubules and uh, pure MCAC, no other um, uh, protein from the cell. So it's really a direct uh, experiment. To understand why detyrosinated microtubules make bad substrates for MCAC, the team incubated the microtubules and motor with different nucleotide analogues to mimic the different stages of MCAC's ATPase cycle. MCAC, in green, binds just fine to the red detyrosinated microtubules in the presence of an ATP analogue. But it doesn't remain bound in the presence of other nucleotides, meaning that MCAC doesn't efficiently bind throughout its ATPase cycle, 
taking longer to move along the filament and disassemble the tubulin subunits. So what we, what we feel about that is that MCAC under the ATP form bind to the lattice of microtubulin, but then the diffusion to, uh, on the microtubule plus and is reduced when the microtubules uh, are deterioronated, meaning that the tyrosine is very important for the diffusion property of MCAC. By showing that the absence of tyrosine reduces the activity of depolymerizing motors, the researchers have answered the conundrum of why detyrosinated microtubules are stable. They now want to solve another long-term mystery by identifying the tubulin carboxypeptidase responsible for removing tyrosine in the first place. Meanwhile, you can find their current paper in the June 29th edition of the Journal of Cell Biology. Thank <laughs> you.